Hello everybody, I'm sure you've watched a bunch of these unboxing videos by now, there's probably many out there on YouTube, and they can be a little bit boring sometimes because people take their time to open the packs and read all the commons and uncommons, so we're not going to be doing that. In fact, today we're going to be doing a speed run opening of this box and these two Clash decks, so uh, we're going as fast as possible, and that's, uh, that's what we're doing today. So a huge shout out to UBS Games for sponsoring this video. Anyway, I'm gonna start the timer and then we're gonna open as fast as we possibly can. All right, timer is ticking. So um, just a little bit about this set. It is Attack on Titan themed. Um, we are going to be, um, the first set that is Attack on Titan themed for Universus. And so I'm really excited to uh, open some cards. I've been brewing some decks. There are some really neat characters. I think the strategy here is going to be um, cutting the tabs open. In fact, the, what might be most efficient is if I just go ahead and cut all of these open and then just slide them out. So that might get us a faster time. Let's see. All right, sweet. So that is one pack down. There's another pack. Hold discipline maneuvers. Interesting. So the one downside to this method is if there's like a rare card, we might miss it. But I believe there's one slot that is like the rare slot. It's not like previous sets where like the crumb could be anywhere. Okay, extra rations. Cool. Um, I think the character could be a special rarity. Okay. Entering Beat Titan's Forest is a really good card. I've been trying to fit that into decks, but uh, it's challenging because I feel like it might be a little bit win more. Okay, Get In, Get Out, that's a really good card. Um, one of my favorites, I think. Um, just being able to sacrifice it at form speed makes it way better than a lot of the other clearing the card pool cards. We've oh, okay, that's a UR alt, but we are on uh, the clock, so we are not going to Take a look at that card closer until after we finish the speed run. Okay, another rare. We're doing, we're at two minutes, okay. Um, I can't remember the last time I did this, what my time was, but uh, I think we're making good time. Okay, halfway done and we have opened about half of the packs. Okay. And this time we are also going to be opening these clash decks. So there will be that component as well. It's going to add to our time. All right. Got another rare there. We are going to have to look through this bulk um, after the video or after the speed run. I'll probably keep recording and then. Um, just make sure we didn't miss any cards that were like rare. All right, let's see. The rare there. Now the question is, where are our URs? They must be at the bottom of the box. You know, we got a get and get out earlier. That was a UR. Oh boy, that is a secret rare alt. And oh cool, a foil character. Oh, a rare character, yeah, right. There are rare characters now. Okay, well, uh, we will definitely take a closer look at that card after this uh, video, after the speed run. But that is really exciting. That looks really nice. Um, actually, yeah. For some reason I thought the secret rare alts, I know there are manga pa uh, panels. Um, I think that's the regular. So the alts have that kind of other look to them. Honestly, uh, I should have probably done more research into the different rarity names. There are a lot of rarities in this set. Okay, Secret Rare Myths of Despair. We, um, we are gonna be running that card in all of our life decks. I think it's extremely good for overhaul, um, and uh, I'm excited to play it in Complete Woods. Weapons Within, nice. Well, uh, I've not read that card, I don't think. Shuffle three cards from your disc pile into your deck after you make, uh, okay. We'll read that later. Another rare. 
high velocity slice and how are we on time? Four minutes before. Okay. Sins of the past. All right. So it took us that long to open the box. Now we are going to open these flash decks. Okay. There's tape on this, so we're going to use scissors here. Now these are a really cool introductory product and I'm actually, I'm gonna, I know there has been comments online about people being upset about these and yeah it is, you know, kind of like a demo deck basically that you're buying but this is actually probably the perfect beginner introductory um, deck. So I appreciate it from that angle and I also think this is a really cool way to kind of, um, I wouldn't say handicap but uh, like you can basically use this character, a six uh, hand size for, okay, this is my chance, this is a very good card. And then that's this deck. I guess for the speed run, we just have to go through the cards. We don't have to actually read them or talk about them. Because we're trying to do this as fast as possible. Okay, and then this is the Levi deck. And uh, time stops. Okay, so we did that in six minutes and 13 seconds. And I challenge anybody else who's opening this box and crash decks to beat my time. Um, until then, I'm gonna just call it the world record because I'm sure everyone else took their time reading the cards. And uh, for the rest of this video, we'll actually look at what we pulled. So uh, let's go ahead and look at you are. So, Sins of the Past. Okay, these are rares. It's a character rare. I'm sure we missed some character uh, rarities. Okay, those are, that's a cool card. Okay. So, for our URs, we got four, it looks like. Get In, Get Out. Very good card. Weapons Within. Exciting. Sins of the Past. Um, that is a UR. And then High Velocity Slice. This is the only card card pool. Okay. Yeah, that's a really cool way to get momentum. And this got a nice deadlock. Um, I think this will be actually a very good card. Removing cards from your rival's discard pile is something that not a lot of cards in this game do. Um, this is gonna be really cool for decks that wanna remove all the attacks your rival is playing, leaving them with no attacks once they cycle. It's also gonna be really cool for um, you know, there's combined firepower and stuff like that 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 would be really good against. Um, yeah, this one is pretty cool. Then for our rares, uh, Swift Execution. This is like backup hate. Not sure we'll see that much play. Relentless Onslaught. Um, you can pick up a three difficulty attack. I think. Now, I really hope that my camera has been catching things. Now that I'm looking at it, I think it's hard to read. But then we have Waylay. This is a really good tech piece. Feral Shriek, I think this card is nuts, actually. This is one of my top cards, for sure. Just being able to discard it during the combat phase to draw a card is really good. And then the fact that it's fire attuned, means that a lot of the fire characters that care about discarding cards, like you can play this with latent skill, you can play this with pony, um, definitely a really good card. Rising strength, military police brigade, not sure about those two cards, assets and actions are always hard to do. Draw your swords, really cool card. Um, yeah, then there are the big titan attacks, that's a huge theme in this set. Um, for the first time ever, we are having attacks that have four checks. Actually, I'm not sure if it's the first time ever, but the first time um, in standard that we're having these attacks that are four checks, but high difficulty. So you have a trade-off. You, you get a better check, but you have to pay more when you play it to actually do stuff. Um, I think anything with a four check is going to be really, really strong. So 
you know, um, and this one's a shift. So what's really cool about this is it's actually a double-sided card, and it turns into this eight time large, which I think is an okay card. Uh, lose a stamina, draw a card, discard a card. Um, can never be bad, uh, especially with like Award the Victor and stuff like that. The one thing about the shifts that I'm worried about is that it's too slow because you have to play this attack um, and you have to play it on a six, so you're probably not gonna do this until maybe turn three, uh, maybe if you're, you feel risky on turn two uh, because it's so high difficulty, you need a bunch of foundations out. So maybe you play this on your turn three and then it transforms at the end of your turn three, so on turn four is the soonest you could use the backup and you give your opponent a turn to attack it and kill it and you can't block that attack. So. It feels a little slow, but um, we'll see how it actually pans out. Scout and Skirmish, um, after you block with this card, gain two health. This is a zero mid block. I think this is going to be a really good card. Smiling Titan's Attacks, this is another transform card. I think these transform cards are really sick. Just being able to get a backup out of playing your attack um, is just really nice. Now, one thing is that um, you know if, you're, if you hit with the attack, then you have to choose between momentum or the backup. Uh, I do think the backup is usually the right call there, but um, that can be a choice you have to make, uh, which is good, interesting choices. A uh, dash towards disaster, I think this card is really great to discard an attack, your uh, rival's attack, where this attack gets minus X speed, where X is the printed speed of the attack you discarded. So like this could be commit minus, discard a card minus like eight speed, if you have a bunch of high speed, uh, printed speed moves. So um, this is gonna be a really cool one on defense, I think. Duplicitous Recollection. Um, choose a backup or shift attack with printed difficulty six, seven or less in your discard pile. If it's a backup, build it. If it's a shift attack, build it transformed. This is gonna be a really nice one for what I was saying earlier. Like, um, I think a lot of these are too slow, but this will make them, if as long as you're playing a seven difficulty or less shift, um, this will make them a lot faster. Entering Titan Forest, I think I mentioned that this is a good one. Just draw two cards if you have nine more foundations. Uh, the one thing is, so for the reason I think four diffs that draw are good is because you can play them on turn two. So on turn two, you really need foundations in your hand if you're building out, um, unless you're trying to kill them on turn two, which is not normally how I play. So um, if we think about something like Mob Strike, um, one of the biggest advantages of Mob Strike is on turn two, you can play it, discard and attack and draw into more foundations. So this loses that power. Uh, because you need nine or more foundations, this is a late game card. So it's, it's not, it doesn't have that early game utility that I think makes other four diffs um, that draw cards really good. But it's still amazing because you draw two, and draw two on a four diff is still on the high end. Like, I actually don't think we've seen that very often. Usually when we see draw two, it's on something like a five diff. Um, so a four diff that draws two is still really good. It just is gated behind something that is actually kind of hard to pull off. Extra rations. Um, yeah, if a player has three more attacks in the card pool, draw a card. That's, um, anything that commits to draw is good. And then the deadlock form is very good. Draw two cards as a form. I could see that play getting play. Attack times outrage. Discard a card and draw a card. Discipline Maneuver, remove three foundations from your discard pile. This attack gets damage equal to the difficulty. I could see this card getting a lot of damage out there, but you do have to remove, um, oh, you know, you're removing foundations, okay. So like if your foundations are like three, three, and three, you could make that a 12 damage move. That's pretty good. Uh, useful information. Uh, this card I really like in Hanji. Um, she basically builds a ton of time cards so uh, the fact that you can flip this for up to five damage is really good. Okay, before covering these, I do want to just quickly go through our bulk and um, just check to see if there's anything kind of interesting that stands out, um, anything we might have missed. Um, yeah, I have to say the art on these cards, like uh, I hope uh, I'm doing a good job of showing these off, but. Uh, for the camera, but it's all manga panel art, which is really cool. Um, I think uh, it really looks good, in my opinion. And um, actually, this got me into the manga. Uh, I didn't watch the, the manga. Uh, this set came out, but after they announced Attack on Titan, 
Uh, it's been on my radar, actually. Like, it was on my I want to watch this list for um, a really long time, and so I kind of um, was always planning to watch it. But then the fact that Attack on Titan became a property for Universus kind of convinced me, okay, now I am going to go and watch the, the manga um, like I wanted to in the past. And, um, and I have to say, it's a really, really good show. Manga. I really enjoyed it. I kind of binged it, uh -huh. which um, which I think is like a great way to kind of um, absorb the manga. Uh, I have a friend who basically said that he kind of lost in the manga because of how long it took uh, for all the different seasons to be released. So um, yeah, binging was a really great experience. Um, not losing all the plot threads. Um, it was very cool. Okay, I don't think I missed anything. Um, so, great. And then I guess uh, onto here, we're gonna now take a look at the big hits. So, I'm gonna see if I can really zoom in here. Um, yeah, I probably will need to get a better camera after this, but. Um, this is to you 2,000 years from now. It's a ultra rare alternate art, and essentially it's an action, uh, which is kind of hard to tell because it's all black and white right now. Um, but basically what it does is it's a form. You look at the top card of your deck, um, and then you can play it as your next form, um, ignoring progressive. So this is really cool for characters that I think stack the top cards of their deck so that maybe they know exactly what the second card is and then you can basically ignore progressive that way. Um, uh, it's a really neat card. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see what, um, what people do with it. But I do think the best usage of this would be to kind of play an attack um, with it. Um, so yeah, you probably want to know that the second card on your deck, because you have to make a check to play this, is um, is an attack. Uh, yeah, and that is to you 2,000 years from now. The next thing we got is a rare character, Bert Holt Hoover. Now, this character did get an errata, which personally I think, okay, so that's why. I think I just need to angle it, because my camera's angled. Okay, good lesson next time. So does that help? Uh, not sure, hard to tell. Okay, anyway, yeah, I, the, the, but I think this character is still not after the errata of response once per turn after your attack is completely blocked. Send it to your momentum immediately. Um, that's really, really good. And then, uh, now I will say, I was surprised, I did test this character a bunch. The form is crazy. And the reason the form is crazy is because you can use it in combination with something like, I don't know, um, Feral Shriek. And because it's a form, you don't even have to play an attack. You can just form, discard it, draw two, and then you're basically a seven-hander that turn. So I think that is a really sick combo. Um, and I think Brittle plays Feral Shriek extremely well just because it turns him into just that extra hand size um, when he's able to do that. And the form is really good with stuff like Award the Victor too. So if your attack deals damage because they don't want to full block it so that it goes to your momentum, they half block or something, you put on top of your deck, then you can form draw into it again. So I think the bottom form is sneakily extremely strong. The only problem with it is if a player has nine or more foundations, you have to transform him. And you don't want to be transforming into uh, the Colossus Titan too early because if you do, you're going to miss out on this static. After it transforms, ruin X and your rival loses X where X equals your momentum. You probably want to have at least three or four momentum before you uh, push that button. Um, and then he becomes basically um, your attack uh, and enhance your attack gain stun one and it's three damage. Like I think that's an okay ability, but... Uh, it's not like a crazy ability. And then his response once per turn after your rival flips a foundation, they sacrifice it, is again an okay ability. Um, not sure it's like crazy unless you really build for that and you're flipping your rival's foundations every turn. Um, but then if you're doing that, you might as well play Reiner who can debuild and ruin on every attack. So um, I actually think his front side is a little bit stronger um, as a character 
and you don't want to be transforming because between the response on top and the the form on the bottom um, it's just insane uh, value you get out of both of those uh, did I just lose my camera okay and then um, yeah okay now next up is this whirling slash commit up to three foundations this attack and your next attack get plus one speed for each foundation committed this way. Uh, if you committed at least one foundation this way, you can draw one card. If you committed three foundations this way, your next uh, air attack gets minus three difficulty. Now, um, I think this card looks really sick. Now, there is some sort of printing line, which is really unfortunate on the Secret Rare ults. It looks like um, it, it uh, didn't uh, get a complete finish, but it's still a really, really nice card to look at. And I think this is a really competitive card, actually. Um, and the reason is it's so flexible. Um, you know, a five diff draw one card that is like a four high five is not like crazy. But it, if you don't have the foundation to commit, it could be a four diff three high five. And if you're in a situation where you have plenty of foundations, you can turn this into a six high five that basically gives your next air attack minus three difficulty and draws you a card, which I think could be good in a lot of situations. So the flexibility of this card makes it really nice. Um, that's Whirling Slash, the secret rare alt. And then finally, Myths of Despair is, um, I think this card looks really clean. I actually, I think I might prefer this to the secret rare alts for playability. Um, just because uh, this is super clean to lead, like this is a very clear, and it's actually showing up on the camera, um, unlike a lot of the other cards that I've been showing off, sadly. Uh, so yeah, being able to make the next card you try to play ignore progressive if it hits is crazy, and for all those life gain decks, which if you're on the life symbol, you're gonna have ways to heal. So you can make this a five high six that your opponent has to block, or else another attack is coming in. Um, I actually think this card is extremely nuts. I think this card will find a way to be broken. Especially, like, I'm specifically thinking Overhaul, actually. And the reason is, um, Overhaul already is ignoring Progressive, and, um, and this just pushes him to another level of that. And he heals on face. So if you ever take damage during the turn, he can heal. And so then this becomes live. Uh, the plus three speed on this so um, i do think this card that you could play from your stage from the face downs um and then kind of uh keep going after you play from your stage from the face downs um is, is going to be really really good okay um that's basically it for this video there's not much more um i want to cover so let me know what you think about this video in the comments Hope you enjoyed this box opening and see you next time.